guys, it's Vandy as well, back with Carfight Vanguard deck profiles, or, or as on the Vandy weekly videos. I hope you guys enjoyed the comment, subscribe, and subscribe. This time we are covering more reviews from the other Kamana Stereo booster set, DZ booster set one, where I think this is the last actually video for that set since I think today we're getting, pri or later tomorrow. The day this goes up, we're getting prisms. So let's go ahead and search out and see what we got. Um, we've gotten some good reveals today, which I. It annoys me that there's so many of them because now I feel like I'm obligated to make a deck for each one or I know I'm gonna have to say no to a lot of people and for a lot of them I have reasons for them. There's two in particular where I don't necessarily have a reason for outside of I just don't want to have to do it. And there's sort of the Deliver of the Stars, Ta Tamina, Great 2 and stuff, 5 Shield, 10k base. Auto and placed on rear guard target, shoot to one trick or treat from your drop zone, put it to your soul. And then auto rear guard attacks if you have five more trick or treats in your drop zone, car boss one, draw a card, plus another power for the turn. This is one of the most questionable support cards I've ever seen. I know Trick and Treat uses Soul. I am aware of this. My issue with this card is the fact that I know Trick and Treat also wants a lot of copies in this drop into the drop zone. So what I don't understand is why does it send it to Soul, and then have another skill that requires more copies to be in drop? I get it. It's supposed to be comboed with one of the many Soul Blasters of that deck, and by many I mean the one that inherently belongs to them. But still, it's. It's not a bad card, it's just this requires outside stuff to make it better, which is what bothers me about it, but it's still a solid 2 over 3 of. Then we have Rascal Stars Roll Vest, still great on boost, 5k shield, AK base, can use rear guard of guards, 5 more trick or treats in the drop zone, plus 5 power for and shield. Um, no. <laughs> No, I, 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 this is partially coming from the side of me that's more aggressive, also because we have the grade one that does almost the exact same thing, just the difference is A, she searches a trick and treat, but she doesn't get 5,000 shield, I would rather have that grade one, because I also think she gets the 5k faster too, so there's that, again, this isn't a bad grade one, it's not me shitting on it, I just know when push comes to shove, I'm not running this unless like there's just extra space, but two over there, and honestly, if there's extra space, I might just shut up and run her, then we have Embracing the Full Sky of Stars, Tika, grade three, 13k base. This card skill should have been this card skill. All of them placed on rear guard circle. Energy blast three. Search your deck or drop zone for one trick or treat. Reveal. Put it to hand and shuffle your deck if you searched it. So use an energy. Sorry, use a resource that is not being used by any other unit in the deck. Proceed to fetch your main order and then just get a free one. Okay. Cool. Again, I say this skill should have just belong to this grade too. But you know what? It is what it is. It's good. I like it a lot. Four of. Then we have warm and illuminating illuminating light. Prage, Prage, whatever the hell. Great turn stuff, 5k shield, 10k base, auto place on rear guard from hand. If your vanguard's a great three, great to live all your sorceress and its card name. Energy blast three to call a card from your soul to rear guard, then soul boss one, choose over your vanguard's five thousand power for the turn. Okay, the soul boss one isn't mandatory, and this energy blast three again in a deck that doesn't use energy is nice. But like why didn't they just give us more Levera Sorcerers? Like, I get it, this gets you like all three different names on board that isn't the Vanguard, but they could have just made this a Levera Sorcerer and then just had the Soul Blast 5k skill. And it wouldn't have been amazing because it's taken away from the Soul, but it would have been better. I don't know. And my pr main issue why I'm bringing this up is the fact that the next cards that we get, none of them are Levera Sorcerers, yet they support them. And also, this one requires a Soul Blast, just making that point clear. Um, two over three of. Then Fascination Tail, Codet, Great 3, 200 percent 13k base, 10, uh, 10k base, I'm sorry. Auto placed on Rear Guard, so 200 Vanguard Vanguard's Little Bear in his card name, 5,000 power. Okay, free 5k to a deck that gives the same Vanguard's power to everyone else. That's fine. This is what I have a problem with. Auto Soul, so it has to be in Soul inherently. When your Vanguard, Levera, and a Sorceress card name atta is attacked, Soul Blast 3 cards with different card names from this card. Call this card to Guard Circle and 5,000 shield for the battle. Isn't the entire point of Levera Sorceress to call their stuff from Soul and then send them back to Soul so your opponent can't murder them? Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how the deck was played. So you're telling me you're now focusing on stacking your soul more so you can add guard power. Because this requires a soul blast of three. I, If I'm right on how Levera Sorceress is played, I haven't played in a while, granted. But if I'm right on how it's played, my... Why? 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 What reasoning is there for this? Three of four of maybe... I know they have a soul charger, I'm just... Just so much confusion. Then we have, thankfully, cards I actually like. The absolute zero line. So 
Uh, I now the new ride line, the final new ride line from uh, Lyric Monasterio set one. So absolute zero ricks, great zero boost back. It shows specifically base on rope pump. It's like can draw cards, change it up. Uh, something I really love about this ride line is it reminds me of Lyricalist from Yu Gi Oh! And I didn't like Lyricalist in terms of skills. I loved their artworks, I just did not like how they played. And well, I like how this deck plays and it reminds me of them. So you know what? I take this as a win win. That'll be probably one of my favorite grade ones in a while and for ride deck. Absolute zero cra, grade zero, grade one boost five. Cause show deck at base auto and roll run. When this unit rides over absolute zero ricks, yay! Another unit that requires a specific starter. I love that. That that's not a sarcastic. I actually do love those cards because it makes you feel like you have to run a specific starter. And we check top seven to up to one absolute zero card or judge made from one level real. Put it to your hand and shuffle your deck. And then act rear guard once per turn. If your vanguard's a great three guard with absolute zero in the card name, and your opponent's vanguard's also a great three guard. Dish a hand card, and this unit gets your contains rear guard. All your front rear guards can find the power for that turn. Bushy's gonna have to be really careful in the future when they make a line or like any support they make that involves discarding cards for Lyrical Monastero because this deck can take full advantage of that. And giving your front row a free 5k is really good, especially because that ability stacks. And if you have three of them, you can willingly ditch three, and a lot of those Judge Maiden cards have ditch effects and give your entire front row rear guard plus 15. This card's a three of in the main deck and a one of in the ride deck. It gives numbers. It nets you advantage because a lot of the cards in the deck have discard fodder. And now Bushy has to be more careful because anything you discard now is automatic fodder for her. So, good card. Then we have Absolute Zero Casa, Grade 2 and Set 5K Shield, telling you a base. Auto Road Upon by a Grade 3 card, Absolute Zero on the card. And choose one copy of Crow and this card from your soul. Call them both to rear guard circles. Okay. They haven't done this in a while, so I don't give it like the knock for this. And even if they did do it, like around the time they were giving it to everyone, such as Alma Jestars and um, Sorairon, I would have given them the pass simply because Crow is so good, in my opinion, that I, I'm willing to accept a vanilla skill. Then Auto Rear Guard, when these two attacks into a Vanguard, your Vanguard's a great three guard of Absolute Zero on the card name. Plus five the power for that battle, and at the end of the battle, retire her draw card. Cool. She replaced herself to help increase your hand, which is important because. Um, Absolute Zero is all about, let's say, the words fairness in quotes um, because they force both players to discard cards. So being able to up your hand cards back is pretty solid. So she's a nice, um, maybe not up in the main deck as a three of, but, you know, she's at least a nice ride deck card for the, you know, the ability skill. Then we have Absolute Zero Sajita, the reason why I love this deck. And she just looks so beautiful. I love the Starlit Sky. I love, like, how her wings kind of, like, have that pilot vi I don't know why I said pilot, but, like, the white violet kind of markings on it. Anyways, grade three, 10% mark, 13k base, contains Vanguard. Vanguard, all of you and your opponent's units get auto vanguard or rear guard. It wins the first battle, that fourth battle that turn or later. This unit cannot attack unless you discard a card from your hand. So, pretty solid. Forces both sides to discard a card. This deck only really gets four attacks in very specific situations when using the right combination of cards that do exist in Lyric Common Stereo. You can hit five attacks. Is it worth it? No. But, I mean, it's, it's an option, but you can at least consistently get four attacks within the deck itself and basically only force yourself to discard one and then her other skill, which we'll skip the middle skill for now, but the second skill is auto vanguard once per turn during your turn whenever you discard a card from the hand by your card's ability, whether it's her own or something else. Kind of one draw a card, meaning you can just pretty much replace the card you drop for her skill or replace the card you drop from Crow's skill. All are pretty solid. And then her other skill is active vanguard once per turn, energy boss four, plus 10k, plus one drive. Cool. So she has triple drive to help replace this hand card. So you also have the other hand card you draw from this skill to replace maybe this hand card, and you're pretty much solid from there. Hell, you have an extra draw from this. So technically speaking, I mean, granted the draw replaces her, but you get my point. Like you get a good place of hand cards, and she has a 23k. And again, something I like to point out whenever Bushy does this, they made another Energy Blast 4 deck that is actually capable of consistently keeping up with the Energy Blast 4 of the main grade three. And they chose not to do it with the DZ Stuck Dark Start deck bosses. I don't hate Sajita. I love her. I think this deck is really cool and it's probably one of my new main Lyrical Monasterio decks. But my god, I hate the fact that Bushy is more proving the fact that they had the ability to actually make those Start deck bosses consistent and they willingly chose not to. Anyways, onto our Judge Maiden cards. And I also like the fact like how there's an archetype for the Rye Line and then there's like an archetype supporting them, kind of like how Nirvana, quote unquote, has the Chakrabarti archetype slash the Virena archetype. The, let's just say Virena archetype because that's pretty much what the deck is. And then like they're supported by the Blaze Maiden archetype or Prayer Dragon archetype, depending on which Virena we're talking about. Anyways, Judge Maiden of Discipline Kuduru, Great Tunes FF Kashio, 10k base, auto and discard from the hand during your turn. If your Vanguard has absolute zero on the card, name, choose one of your rear guards and gets 5,000 power for that turn. 
Okay, cool. Any rear guard doesn't matter. I use this effect to pump up a trigger once, which actually made the difference between me winning and losing. And again, discard fodder for your skills, so pretty solid. Also, just discard it whenever, so ride deck fodder. Cool if you already have a rear guard preset up for her. Then we have Judgment of Fluffy Morals Marius, grade 3, 10 percent 13k base. I just, I don't know why, I love her art. Like, the school looks so good in the background, her pink hair looks good. A lot of cards that have pink hair, I realize that I'll either, like, love to death or I will hate, because the pink hair will either look, like, badly done, or it will look, like, so smooth and consistent with the background. So, I don't know. Anyways, auto rear guard at the end of the battle, she attacked into anything. If your vanguards are great through guard or absolute zero, retire her, choose opponent's great to lower rear guard, kill it. The best part about this is you can just swing this into an opponent's rear guard in the front row, kill her, and then kill the unit, other unit that's in the front row. I actually like this grade 3. I, I like it a lot. And it kind of sets up combos for later cards. So, uh, 4 of in my opinion. Then we have Judgment of Secret Prayers Clary. Grade 1 boost, Fat Kishoda, AK base. Auto discard from your hand during your turn. If your vanguard's an absolute zero, shove to soul. Okay, this deck doesn't use a. Mm, no, yeah, this version of the deck doesn't use up that much soul, but, like, if you play a lot of the discarder cards, like, the ones that activate when discarded from Rydex, such as Vouch Pun, then, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of soul problems, so Clary being able to go to soul is pretty solid. And, and again, during any point of the turn, ride deck abilities doesn't matter, and then continues guards work with your vanguard's an absolute zero, plus five in the shield. This is probably the first time... No, 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 not the first time, not the first time, because technically speaking, since set four, I think, is the earliest, they've, they've been able to increase shield value on grade one, but this is one of the few cards that has an inherent shield buff while you're on grade one, because the second you, I technically you have it on grade zero, but you can't guard cards higher grade, so when you're on grade one, she's a 10k shield. That's honestly pretty solid. So, you know, three over four of it prevents early game rush. Then we have Judge Maiden that circles the flower guard in Lulina. Great turn set five to get shield tank. It based auto when she's placed on rear guard circle. Vanguard is absolute zero. Counter boss one check top five for your one Judge Maiden or absolute zero card from them. Add to hand shelf your deck. So either add another toolbox card or add your Persona Rides or um, Crow or sorry, Coalesces or the best grade one in the game. I firmly stand by that statement. And then auto rear guard when it attacks a great three or greater, it gets five thousand power for that battle. Okay, all around pretty solid. 15k swing. I like that. It's nothing too major. I much prefer the rear guard kill because it can technically kill twice, especially because it combos well with this. But you know, she's still pretty solid nonetheless. So three of because CB1 top five search. Then speaking of which, Judgment of Heavenly Colors for Peace are here. Great two and a five k show 10k base. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the part we all know I love for a reason. Zamunu. Honestly, I love this. Listen, I'm not a furry. I'm not, but like I don't know why. The the ears plus the moon mm, and the tail. I don't know why. That like kind of speaks to me. And it was auto when discarded from your hand during your turn. Again, at any point via any means. If Vanguard's an absolute zero energy charge one. You know what's sad? Yeah, the freaking Dark States deck had like a lot of energy chargers. So you would think that, oh, for the DZ start deck boss to be consistent, they had to need a lot of energy chargers. No, this deck only has one. And you, and guess what? You only need to use it once per game. Because every time I've played this card, I've only used it once per game. And yet, I'm consistently pulling off the Vanguard skill with no trouble or no, like, worry at all. Meaning, Bushy literally just had to give us one consistent energy charger per each of those decks. And they chose not to. For whatever reason that may be. Anyways, auto drop zone when you're great through. Get a Vanguard with absolute card name attacks. If you do not have the same copy of this on your board, you may call this card to Rearguard Circle. Cool. It can go to closed Rearguard Circles, but it's probably better just, you know, use this, kill a column, or like, you know, kill Interceptors and then call over it. So, or like call to the empty circle that it just made. So that's pretty solid. And then auto Rearguard on attacks and anything. If your Vanguard's a great through, get absolute zero plus another power for that battle. Cool. 20k swing plus crow who gives your who gives itself the ability to give your front row 5k is pretty solid so um yeah all around very good great too i love her art a lot i love her skill a lot i think she's actually amazing so four up for me <laughs> then we move on to sienna's cards so sienna's one of those decks where i was talking about earlier where i don't hate her support i actually like her support a lot but I just do not want to do a deck profile on her, and I'm kind of like tempted just to not do a fight. Anyway, Shining Twin Stars in hands, Aster, Grade 2 and stuff, 5 Kishio, 10k base. Auto no place on rear guards, so you up to one of your opponents from a rear guards, bounce it to hand. Soul Blast one, either trigger or Sienna unit in his card name. And this you can find this power until the end of the turn. Freeze your opponents open from a rear guard circle, so 20k, a pretty solid. And then auto rear guard when you're great through, get advantage of Sienna's card name attacks. If your opponent has no front rear guard, CB1 Sienna's unit. Okay. Now, once per turn. Ret removing your opponent's rear guards, not once per turn standing itself. So if Sienna, God forbid, ever got a restander, 
Well, there we go. Assuming that they're going to print more Siennas because, you know, every deck so far has gotten a dress up, including Fortier and Hermina, which I'm not against. I love those two, I'm just saying. But um, Sienna's probably going to get one next, which inherently means there's a chance that she could have a restand skill. And if she does, well, Fort Murrow restand already, I can see. But being able to restand itself is pretty great. And being able just to free remove an opponent's rear guard is perfect. And then if you want to Soul Blast, you can get power. All around mix are pretty solid, great too. And it doesn't matter what grade your opponent's Vanguard's at, she's going to get the restand regardless. So, four of. Then we have Perfect Vantage Lumi, so grade one boost, 5 Kashiro Decay Base. Again, I love her art. I don't know what it is. And again, like, okay, this isn't necessarily pink. It's kind of like violet or like pink violet. But again, like, there are cards where I just hate the card art of because they have pink hair. And like, there are some of them I love simply because they have pink hair. Like, in this case, pink violet. And I love the background. It's an actual good Starry Night Sky. And a lot of them are like the same background over and over again. So, like, some of them I just, like, these two I'm desensitized to. But well, okay, this one not necessarily, but you get my point. But then, like, this, I don't know, it feels like so much more vibrant and cool. Anyways, can use rear guard during turn. Vanguard's a great three good over Sienna's Carney plus 2,000 power. I don't know why. That skill felt so retro looking at. Like, I don't know why. I thought that was the coolest skill in the world when I read that, even though, like, we've had cards like that before. It just felt, like, so unique and fresh compared to, like, all the other stuff we've been getting. Anyways, 10k base. And then auto rear guard when this unit boosts a great three to Sienna. Soul boss one, either Sienna or trigger. Choose one of your units and 5,000 power to the turn for each of your opponents farm open rear guard circles. Oh, look at the restander. Uh, to be fair, though, that gives it to a unit, and this is probably have to attack already, but hey, plus power to the Vanguard, at least, even though it's already getting a 10k booster. Either way, though, this great one's actually good i like its skill a lot you know adds numbers and to both itself and other units and honestly it's just all around very solid and i love Ferrari a lot so again like there's a i don't want to do the deck profile but like i really want to play the cards and i also like both just for the skills but also because of the arts so i'm like half tempted to do it and i'm half not anyways four of lulu me and we have Flyaway Parasite, pa Parasite, Grade 3, Chinese Persona, 13k base, auto place on Rear Guard Circle. If you have a Grade 3, you're going to have a card name, Soul Boss 1, either Sian or Trigger Unit. I like how they're doing both, so if you want to do either or, you can. And return all your pumps from Rear Guard to the hand. Free rear guard bounce. I think there was a Sienna card that literally got benefited if your opponent couldn't bounce. So, like, that's all around just a good support card inherently. And then auto rear guard. At the end of your turn, if you have a great three guard advantage over Sienna's card, name, energy blast, three bounce to the hand. Okay, that doesn't sound like much, but that's just a free, non conditional bounce to your opponent's entire front row. So, if they have resist for some reason, fuck them. <laughs> like,. This card's actually really good. Again, I say, I don't want to do the profile, but Sienna genuinely has good cards, and I don't like Sienna, and I'm willing to, like, and I'm half tempted to do it just so I can play these cards, but these are honestly really cool, and I love all of their arts. Like, they're the most unique star feel. Okay, some of the most unique star feeling backgrounds in this entire set to me, so I'm kind of, like, intrigued that they gave them all to Sienna. Anyways, four of. And we have Deep Sea Diva Belmel, Great Twin Set 5 Kashio, Tenge Base, Auto and Place on Rear Guard Circle, choose a Great 3 card Pacific and Carnage from your drop zone. Bot deck it if you did, Energy Blast 3 draw a card. Well, it can just be Energy Charge 3, Energy Charge 2, I don't care. Why did it have to be Energy Blast 3 to draw? And then Auto Rear Guard when it attacks, choose one of your units, bet 5,000 power for that battle, or for the turn. And at the end of that battle, bot deck this unit. So opens up Rear Guard Circles for least superior call plays, doesn't require either Grade 3 specifically. It literally just requires you to bot deck a specific card for only the first effect. So it's not bad. I wish it was a little bit better, but hey, it is a nice generic grade 2 all around, so it's a good 3 of. Then we have Let's Have Our Dreams Come True, Tortilla. Okay, again, another really cool background card. So, like, because we kind of have, like, the afternoon sky, and I really like the dress, and I just like the water. And it was good on boost, 5 Kashiro, okay, base, auto, when replaced on rear guard, so count plus one, check top five, check to one, order card that isn't a regardless piece, reveal it, add it to your hand. If you're not a real card, counter charge one. So either just shuffle your deck or add a card to hand by paying CB1. And then we have Dream Not Swaying in the Waves of that. Grade 3 to 9 percent 13k base. Auto Rear Guard. When your final Rear Guards return to your hand during the main phase, if your opponent's Vanguards are Grade 3 Rear to travel to Soul, and then choose one of your rear Vanguards, and it gets Continuous Rear Guard. Continuous Vanguard. I don't know why it says Rear Guard. All of your front Rear Guards place this turn, get 5,000 power to the end of the turn. This ability stacks. So if you build your deck around this, because Delirical Monasterio can do this, it's going to take a little bit more involvement, but if you willingly build your deck around this, you could have a, just a bunch of these on the board, bounce one of your front or rear guards during the main phase, send four of these into soul, and that means your entire front or rear guard gets plus 20 if they're placed this turn, which they most likely will be. Play it in a multi attack deck such as Kyrie, maybe drop a Persona right on top of it. Four of. Uh, again, you shouldn't do that unless your deck is like based around this, but honestly, it's a good at least like two over three just because we're getting free 5k to your front row. Then we have, uh, I don't even, I truly do not believe this is this card's name, but Zu, Zu Kiru Piroto. 
this is such a cute little thing and i can think of like a hundred different skills than could have had and of course they had to waste this skill on it grade two intercept 5k shield 10k base auto when ditched from the hand during your turn if you have a grade two or greater vanguard soul boss one call it to rear guard circle if it's your battle phase it can't attack that turn continues rear guard if your rear guard is bounced to handless turn boost so many different skills such a cute little card wasted with that skill if you're in need it, if you need to run it it's a three of don't run it in Leafla. If you run it in Leafla, I will call you out because Leafla, quite literally in her card text, does all of your grade twos get boost. Take that as you will. And now we have our final reviews for today. First up, we have Bermuda Triangle Cadet Shizuku. So she's our grade zero, uh, the standard when rolled upon draw card. I'm kind of surprised that Prism's just got an entire alternate ride line when I thought they were all going to be in the same deck. But you know what? I'll take the alternate ride line. Then we have Mermaid Idol Sedna, grade one boost, 5k shield, 8k base, on a rolled upon by top idol Aqua, soul boss one, check top seven, just one grade to a grade unit, add it to hand and reveal it, and then shuffle the deck. Okay, cool. Did just. It's a free card to hand. I just feel like, especially with the inclusion of Aqua, that they this is the ride line they meant to give um, Pacifica, and then they just completely forgot to give it to her. So, especially because Aqua is one of the most generic grade twos ever, specifying only Mermaid, meaning she does work with Kyrie. Anyways, top seven search is pretty solid for a grade one ride deck. Then we have uh, I've lost the cards. Top out Aqua. Marota Palma, the grade three Mermaid. Any Mermaid, so it can be very. It can be. Uh, Labrador, it can be Kyrie, I believe, it can be one of the other Lyrical Monasterio decks, it can be uh, Pacifica, etc. Check top fighters, one grade to a grade unit added to hand shuffle deck. Okay, we got a lot of focus on grade to a grade units here, but I mean top five search is top five search. Then we have Prism Image Vert, grade three, 200 percent right, 13k base, act Vanguard once per turn. If you did not ride by a card's ability this turn, slow boss one, choose to one card from your hand with the same card name as this unit, write it as Stan. If you wrote a card, you draw a card, then choose one of your vanguards, it gets 10,000 power for that turn. If your opponent's vanguards are grade 3 or greater, it gets continuous vanguard. All your former units get plus 10k instead of just this unit gets 10k. So, pretty much trigger Persona Ride if you went second. Which is all around pretty solid considering the fact that your first grade 3 turn, you could have Persona Ride, and if you've been aggroing the entire game, that's definitely going to come to help you. But also, like the fact that like, that's just a simple soul boss to like cheat out a free power. I mean, in the very least, your Vanguard is going to be a 23k swing, and you're replacing it with your own draw. Now, we just need ways to bot deck your um, grade 3s by recycling them. If only the Mermaid we got before was not specific to Pacifica. The other skill is auto vanguard when it attacks anything. CB1, choose one of your rear guards, bounce it to hand, choose up to one grade three of this card from your hand, call it to rear guard. That feels more or less like a fuck it skill, like they just gave it this skill because, I mean, this effect exists, so they just gave it a bounce skill because it feels like all the other Bermuda Triangle ones have a bounce skill. But either way, though, you know, it allows for multi attack with a possible persona ride on turn three, so that's all around pretty solid. Vert is just a overall nice solid grade three. Again, I'm surprised that it's not a part of the Labrador line, but I mean, hey, it's cool to have alternate ride lines. Then we have Perfect Shape Parfenio, grade two, grade three, two hundred percent right, thirteen k base. Really weird skier on auto rear when your grade three grade of angle reverts and his card name is placed. Shuffle to soul check top five. Choose to one of your great, choose to one card from one of the cult of rear guard and shuffle your deck. Um, okay, sure. I mean, it's a free rear guard, but I mean, I could have had like another rear guard skill on top of it to make this card a little bit worth more. But I mean, a it replaces herself and she does get you soul cards, so you can just bam soul boss yourself right and center. So. And you know, she's a nice 3 ever 4 of. Then we have Diva of Deep Blue Full Seal, Great on Boost, 5k Shield, 8k Base. It is a really good goddamn thing that says continuous, because if it wasn't, this card would be bad. Uh, continuous Rear Guard, this unit fathoms power for each time you grade through your Vanguard. Vern, his card name is placed this turn. So if you played Vert twice, once from Ride Deck, once from her skill, she's an 18k booster. I say she would be bad if she wasn't a continuous, because the only other way she, her skill would be workable is if she was an auto ability, which essentially means the fact that if she wasn't on board for one of your um, Vanguard places, automatically she wouldn't be useful. So she's actually a really good card, and I like her as a 4 of. Then we have Prism Image Clear. She's a great one with boost, the 5k shield, the 8k base, and auto when she's placed on rear guard circle, ditch a hand card, search your deck, or drop zone for up to one vert card that's grade 3. Add it to your hand. If you search your deck, you shuffle it. All around pretty solid because she literally just gets you your vert access almost immediately, which is great. And then continues rear guard during your turn. If you have a grade 3, get a vanguard vert in its card name. She'll get plus 5 power, so she's a 13k base, which is again pretty solid. All around, she works as a really like good support card because, I mean, to be fair, she's a 13k base and on top of that, she's the um, searcher for Vert, so very good support card for uh, for that. And we have Prism and Ms. Rosa, grade 2 instead of 5k shield, 10k base, all she's placed on rearguard circle, She's a grade 3 card of Vert and card from your hand, reveal it if you revealed a card, or your vanguard's over, add 5,000 power to her, and the Karen Boss will draw a card, so 
which I forgot what card. No, it was like the last G era cards, where like a lot of the decks were randomly getting those grade twos, the hat tank A bases, where you re reveal a copy of the grade three, and either you reveal a copy or have the Vanguard, or they lose five thousand power. And I like the skill because she'll get the fifteen k if your Vanguard's the grade three, or if you have one in your hand, which means you can proc it while you're a grade two. And if you want to, you can see we want to draw a card as well, which is already pretty solid. And then auto rear guard when her attack hits. If you have a grade three, get a Vanguard for in the card name. Card charge one and bouncer. So you open up rear guard circles to possibly proc more combos like say for example you use this vert to bounce a rear guard and they call something like floor from set one of lyrical monastery where you then flip the top card to call another rear guard because your other column is now open which is pretty solid and she can also get you counter draw around is pretty nice so she's a very solid grade too in my opinion so for uh, and then finally we have our PG, which would be our um, Mermaid Idol Ellie. I'm so glad I remembered her name. Anyway, she's just our standard Sentinel. She looks pretty cool. And without further ado, that's it for this one. I hope all of you enjoyed. This wraps the end up the Lyrical Monastery reveals. And I have no idea who we're getting later this week and next week. So I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join us on Twitch, and don't forget to send up your vanguards.